is helping her so much on a spiritual level. Because what anorexia, you know, any form of addiction, because it is, you know, anorexia is, is a kind of addiction to being, to not eating. It is, it is a thirst for wholeness, isn't it? It is a, a hunger, the, you know, whether it's alcoholism, anorexia, compulsive, obsessive compulsive disorder, all these things, they are, I believe that they are a desperate search for meaning. And anorexia especially, because in times past, someone like her would have been regarded as a saint almost, you know, fasting as a part of, of, of the spiritual pro. She's probably deeply, deeply spiritual. But this world, it's a selfie world, you know, selfies, Facebook and, and, and materialism. She can't, she's so, I think she could be, you know, I feel that a lot with people who are anorexic or have, have alcoholics or that they are actually deeply, deeply spiritual people, but they don't know how because we get no training anymore in schools or there's nothing even on the media about it anymore. Religion, everybody's kind of fed up. So where do you go if you have this yearning? Like I had when I grew up, I had this tremendous desire. I mean, I wanted to become a nun and there's still people like that, but you know, what's the point anymore of living like that in a world today? It's totally irrelevant, whereas in times past, People like this girl may well have found her meaning and being a guide and a helper, a spiritual mentor to other people. But she's so young, she has no hope, no help beyond people like you who are helping her and showing her that there's a spiritual path. It is a hunger for meaning in life. That's what it is. I don't believe it's about being thin and beautiful. That's just whatever. It's a hunger, the same with that. A thirst for wholeness. The fact that the mother is detached, this is the two of them are together for some deeply spiritual reason. One is full of loving and giving the daughter and it's being denied and the other is so cut off like, like you and I pray for her. But if it's her, if, 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 if anorexia wins, that's her path. She's found the material world so distressing, she can't cope with it. She's deeply, deeply spiritual and that's, that's the way to reach her, through meaning. Not through eat more, you know, go out more. That's not gonna help, talk to your mum. No, I think spiritual meaning finding meaning through spirit, come to a place like this. I mean, I had a very, very disjointed teenage, and I've written about that in my books. But coming to a place like this, I, I felt at home. And I, I just hope and pray, and I hope you'll continue to, to help her. But anorexia, it has to be a self-choice. She's not gonna do it herself. Uh, she's not gonna do it um, through other people. Somebody isn't going to say something magical and it's going to snap out. It will be an internal decision, internal decision. And if she's spiritually strong, it will happen. She will suddenly wake up and get that desire to live, live again. She doesn't want to live in the world currently as it is. And as I said, just think about in medieval times, someone like that would have been considered almost holy. You know, people would have prayed to her because of her ability to abstain from food for that long. But, you know, people like that, and that's why I try and give a voice to them in my books. I said they're high... Have you... She read the book, Highly Sensitive People. That might be something to read, rather than the book about recovering from anorexia. There's a book, wonderful book, I forget the author, just The Highly Sensitive Person, How to Survive When the World Overwhelms You. And it describes highly sensitive people. I say, people like yourself who are empathetic, intuitive, who, who are very sensitive to their environments, how it is a genetic trait that scientists have developed that. They think about one in four people are like that. But we learn to shut that down. And what they've also found out about highly sensitive people, if they don't develop those spiritual traits, they can plunge into depression and addictive behaviour. It is a need within highly sensitive people to have spiritual or religious meaning. So that would be something to show her that she's not alone. Don't go down the anorexia path, I think, in helping her recover, more in the, you're highly sensitive. And you need to find way, a highly sensitive person, it's a fantastic book, spoke to me, and I mention it actually sometimes in my, my books about, and all the people that write to me, they're highly sensitive. But how do you cope in a world where, you know, the atrocities that we read about almost every day, I mean, I don't know about you, but I cry about those uh, all the time. But a lot of people, they get anaesthetized to it. You know, it's, it's a different personality trait, but I think highly sensitive people, they take it all in. I mean, I remember when I was about eight or nine, I saw a, a bird flew into a bus. And I spent all day at school crying because I worried about the bird flying. You know, and everybody could cry, baby, sissy, you know? It's especially bad if you're a guy and you're like that. Um, it's e in some ways, it's easier for, for, for women, but... Um, 
Heidi said it is a hunger, a thirst for wholeness, a hunger for wholeness. What about the relationship with the dad? Sometimes it's crying out for the dad. She's going to be in Eaton Spiritual 100. She's going to write a fantastic book. She will. If she can recover through that, she can show how she's come through that journey, recover from it and grow strong and love herself and somehow find a way to express her spirituality in this world that we live in now. She will be amazing. She could do anything.